Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where it's a very, very, very Merry Christmas, it seems, for both Disney and Sony, but mostly Disney. We're going to start with Sony first, though, who, of course, is getting ready to do battle with Disney. And on that note, I thought it was interesting. I got the feeling in the comments on my Jumanji review that while some of you genuinely enjoyed Jumanji, some of you were just pushing it because you want people to see that instead of Star Wars. You don't need to, you don't need to put your, your finger on the scale here. Let's just see how things go. And it's a very interesting situation as we're going to discuss a little bit today. But you'll have your answer soon enough. But you know what? Let's have it be a fair fight. Don't go putting misinformation out there and trying to pump up one movie because you'd like to see it do better or, in fact, just want to see that other movie fail. I, I, don't, I wonder if you guys are sensing the same thing. Anyway, going into this weekend, Sony set the expectations for the new Jumanji low. They said, we just think it's going to open on par with the last one, which meant something with a three in front of it. But the industry was bullish because they'd like to see movies besides movies from Disney do well. So they said, no, we think it's going to open with something with a four in front of it. And then as the weekend got started, it looked like maybe it would have a five in front of it. But a six? Well, that's a box office number with smoldering intensity. We'll see if it stays at six. I think there's a very good chance that by Monday afternoon, it could have a five in front of it once again. But that would still be a very sexy number, especially considering where this thing was expected to start out. Ah, Sony, can it become a real studio? They, they lost Bond, that was one of their crown jewels, and as for their other crown jewel, they've become like divorced parents with Spider-Man, sharing custody with Disney. Uh, their streaming service is such a non-entity. Every time I bring up streaming services and I'm like, Sony doesn't have one, you guys are like, what about Crackle, Grace? First off, is anyone watching Crackle? I don't think they are. In fact, Sony has so little faith in Crackle that even though they own the rights to Seinfeld, the show, they sold them to a competing streaming service, Netflix. And in fact, you know, that happened just recently. They could have put it on Crackle, but they were like, eh, let's, let's, let's put all the Jerry stuff over on that. I mean, they got paid a lot for it. It wasn't an altruistic deed by any means. But you would think they'd want to buoy their own streaming service, re rename it yet again, and try and get in there. But in fact, there were rumors just recently that after the Disney-Fox deal, Sony might also want to get out of the entertainment business. Because, like, well, Rupert Murdoch, I think he was like, entertainment's hard, and I would like my sons to be involved in Disney. Murdoch now being one of the biggest shareholders of the company, just like Steve Jobs became after the Pixar uh, acquisition. Uh, and this should be looked into, maybe. But anyway, uh, Sony was, you know, there were rumors that Sony was like, we don't want to be in the entertainment business either. So we'll sell off our entertainment holdings to a place like Apple, Amazon, or as many people were hoping, maybe Disney. <laughs> So I'm, uh, I don't. I think that would. At what point would Disney be considered a monopoly? Who knows? All right. So, but now, so for now, Sony is still in it. They're still competing. And after, well, kind of. And after just failing to turn Men in Black, Charlie's Angels, Angry Birds, and even Zombieland into franchises, you know, franchises that are ongoing, it's been a rough year for Sony. But it seems that they're ending on a high note, as Jumanji is indeed a true success, at least out of the gate. For, uh, this third entry for the studio. Side note, don't feel too bad for Sony. Well, 2019, as I just said, has been rough. They do have Little Women, Bad Boys for Life, Bloodshot, I think that looks very good, Peter Rabbit 2, and maybe Ghostbusters Afterlife. You know, I, again, I think a lot of people were, you know, saying good things about Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters Afterlife just to diss on the 2016 Ghostbusters, you know, instead of genuinely liking the film. But maybe that'll help at the box office. The money is still green. There's no, there, you know, it's not, you know, you don't get a fraction of the a cost of a dollar if people go to see it for other reasons than just actually wanting to see your movie. So they don't care. Uh, but then also Sony has their solo Spider-Man flicks coming up like Morbius, Venom 2, and Spider-Verse 2. So they're, they're still, they're still, they're still in it. Uh, now back to Jumanji the next level. This is not only great news for Sony, A minus cinema score, solid audience breakdown. See? Looks like Disney isn't the only studio that can make an all ages crowd pleaser. Uh, I was going to say a bland crowd pleaser, but I like most of the Disney fare. Um, although things like Toy Story 4 seem like so, so phoning it in. Um, but you know, uh, there's, there's, there's something to be said for being a four-quadrant crowd-pleaser, and that's certainly what Jumanji is as well, whether you like it or not. That, you know, the, 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 the formula of who goes to see the movie, regardless of its quality, is still there. Now, also, uh, on, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to 
missed any of these movies. As I said in my review, I thought Jumanji was entertaining, even though I thought the energy was off. All right, so uh, Dwayne Johnson. This is also great news for him, giving The Rock his second $60 million debut of the year after Hobbs and Shaw, proving that after some weaker debuts, audiences still enjoy his cooking when it's the right dish. Uh, this is also big news for Kevin Hart. Oh boy, he and Dwayne Johnson are gonna be making movies together forever. Uh, this is the biggest debut of Hart's career, made even sweeter by coming after a pretty rough patch for the comedian. I mean, I don't know if people went to see Kevin Hart, but he didn't keep anyone from going. Uh, well, I know he kept some of, I saw some comments from some of you, but not enough to dent the box office or even hurt it. It's doing great. Uh, and then, of course, the rest of the cast will benefit, particularly Karen Gillan and Aquafina, who are just starting to build their own solo careers. This will look very good for both of them. Uh, now, as for what this means for Jumanji going against Star Wars, round two. Well, it's good and bad. Let's get the bad out of the way, because I know some of you will be like, what? Well, there's a chance, because this number is so big. Well, also, I mean, obviously people, you know, the, the, the brand grows. People weren't sure if they'd like Jumanji anymore, but they know after the last one that they, they probably would, so they're more likely to see it opening weekend. But there's also a chance they went to see it opening weekend. A lot of people rushed out to see it because they want to get it out of the way before Star Wars opens. So we'll have to wait to see what Jumanji's hold looks like next weekend. Then, of course, we have to see what the reaction to Star Wars is from both critics and audiences. Is it bad? Is it good? Is it meh? You know, all those things will be a factor. Plus, back in 2017, the last time we had this, uh, this throwdown, it really was just Star Wars versus Jumanji. Even The Greatest Showman didn't become a much of a commodity until mid-January. But this year, it looks like all the studios think they can take on Star Wars, and we have a very crowded slate. So we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see what audiences decide to do. I would say, at the very least, this crowded marketplace could hurt repeat viewing for all these movies. Uh, but no matter what happens with Star Wars, Disney is having a record-breaking 2019. They've already been breaking records this year. They just keep breaking them and setting the bar even higher for going forward. Frozen 2, yes, has joined the Billion Dollar Club just one month out, and this means that Disney has six billion dollar films in 2019. A new, new record, because as we had just discussed, five was a record already, but now they've set it at six. And speaking of records, eight billion dollar films overall for 2019 is a new record for Hollywood in general. Oh, so great. Uh, but again, six of the eight are Disney. Uh, and then again, as we discussed also last week, Disney has had hit 10 billion worldwide, uh, uh, worldwide for the year, which is also a new record. Whether Kathleen Kennedy joins her fellow Disney execs on the winning side or stands in stark contrast on the other side, we will know soon enough. All right, now globally, I would also like to point out that Frozen once again did very well in Asia. Those three Asian countries are huge, uh, which is why you're seeing more and more Hollywood films cater to them. Uh, those are the top three markets for Frozen again. And then also it did uh, its next best uh, markets were the UK and Germany. But you can see how small the other markets are in comparison. I'm sorry, but it's true. Every penny counts. But that's why, you, you know, some of you are like, why don't we go over all the different countries? Well, these numbers aren't particularly exciting. Only when you amass them together does it get cool. Now, as for the weekend's other new releases, audiences made it clear that they go to the movies to escape, not to double down on the hot topics of today. That's what Twitter is for. Duh! Clint Eastwood's vilification of the press, Richard Jewell, was surely intended to stand out as a rare conservative hit in Tinseltown. I'm sure Eastwood was super excited about it. He's like, I'm going to take on the press. What do you think, stool? And he, shouldn't, he should stop taking career advice from that stool. Because instead, Eastwood's old school depiction of a reporter trading sex for information, totally unproven, by the way, undercut the movie significantly. I'm sure he's none, none, none too pleased with Olivia Wilde who, who cut from the group and was like, I've got to save myself, and kind of also said bad things about the movie. She was like, wasn't my idea to portray it that way, but you know, I'm just an actor here. And Clint Eastwood's like, what? All right, I mean, again, she's like, I gotta save myself. Uh, then Jason Blum thought it would be clever to take, I don't think, by the way, Olivia Wilde really did save herself. I think the whole thing's a mess. Uh, then Jason Blum thought it would be clever to take on toxic masculinity with Black Christmas and got one of his lowest openings in quite a while. As for the overall top 10, Ford versus Ferrari and Knives Out are having the slowest race ever to the century mark. I can't believe Ford v Ferrari isn't there yet. 
Although both, I want to make this clear, are considered hits, and will probably do pretty well at the box office for the next few weeks, as they're both awards contenders. I think Ford versus Ferrari will go on to the Oscars. I don't think that's going to happen with Knives Out, especially after it was not recognized by the SAG Awards, which are the biggest voting block for the Oscars. Uh, but also, both those movies will do boffo biz on streaming. And speaking of streaming, I know so many of you hate streaming, but what do you want? It's changing the industry. And it looks like many of you are waiting until streaming to see a lot of these movies. You don't want to talk about streaming, but yet you relegate so many movies to streaming. With the, such a crowded um, uh, slate, what, what, what's helping you decide what to see in theaters and what to wait to see on streaming? And it's scary to wait to see a movie on streaming because while you might intend to see a movie on streaming, you might not just you might just not get to it even when that comes because there's just so many original so much original content on streaming, etc. But uh, for instance, Dark Waters had one of the biggest drops of the weekend just one week after it finally went wide. <laughs> what a disaster! Uh, and it's just, I, as I said last weekend, it just came out at a very bad time. I think the movie looks excellent, but there's just no time to see that movie. It doesn't have an urgency to it. Now, in the specialty market, Uncut Gems. Oh, this needed some good news, and it got it, because it was, you know, of course, was snubbed uh, quite a bit last week during all the awards nominations announcements. But Uncut Gems was the surprise winner of the specialty market, boasting the second best opening uh, weekend per theater average uh, of the year after Parasite. Oh, that's excellent. And it set a record for uh, distributor A24 when it comes to opening weekend per theater averages. So that's fantastic. Oh, I'm so happy for that movie. I hope this is only the beginning of great box office headlines for Uncut Gems. It goes wide on Christmas Day. It's going to be a great New Year's film. Uh, Bombshell was solid, right? But again, seems to confirm that audiences do not want to deal with difficult issues at the multiplex, at the very least, let's say, during the holiday season. Now, as for, I also, I think, you know what, I think these are subject matters that people are so divided on that they don't really feel I think anyone can totally speak to it. I mean, on the one hand, you're probably preaching to the choir, and then the other half doesn't want to hear it. So nobody goes. I think it's, that's probably what's happening with these specific movies. Because, you know, Hollywood's always made important films, and people have historically gone. So I think that's what's happening here specifically. All right, so as for this coming weekend, this is it. Star Wars finally hits theaters. Uh, the, is the fandom menace real? Now, Star Wars is expected to open with around 200 million. Sure, that's the lowest of the trilogy, as many are gleefully pointing out, but it's still 200 million. That would make it the second biggest opening of the year and put it in the top 10 openings of all time. It would not be bad if it opened at 200 million. I think if it hit, hope it opens, let's say, not close to 200 million underneath it, like if it's like 190 something, I think it'll still be okay. But if it's like 170, 180, then you can start to be like, ah, oh, it's not doing well. But, you know, 200 would be fine. As for Cats, well, maybe it'll be the new Greatest Showman, which opened with a measly 9 million, but went on to 435 million worldwide. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if it's any good. I have no idea what to expect. All right, so, and although, as I've said, and many of you as well, it's a lot of people surprising Christmas Day movie choice, right? My family's leaning that way, which I'm shocked about, and many of you might be dragged to cats as well. <laughs> okay. All right, so, uh, I'm curious. What are you planning to see on Christmas Day? All right, so that's this week's movie math. Thanks for going over the box office with me. Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And, of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.